Hey guys, welcome to this uh, video. This is just a quick demonstration as to how to set up a continuous delivery pipeline for a WordPress site. First off, I'll start by just going over the repo um, and how that's set up. So currently we have our database. Um, this is empty at the moment because I haven't run the, the containers recently, um, but this is only for local. Uh, the next would be the HTML directory, and basically this is where the site is stored. Uh, then we've got the schema, which would be um, just a SQL file that we can build a local environment with. The next uh, will be our Bitbucket uh, pipeline, which is how we basically say how we want um, our changes to be deployed to the live site. The next would be the docker compose file, and this is basically how we set up our local environment. Uh, we run two containers, one's a web server running PHP and Apache, and the other one's the database server, which is just running MySQL. We also have a docker file, which is how we build our web server container. And we've also got a initialization file for um, setting up our xdebugger. The only thing this repo is missing at the moment is a uh, git ignore, so we'll go ahead and add that. And at the moment the only thing we want to ignore is the contents of uh, db. Um, now once we've done that, because this repo, uh, this folder will be empty, uh, we'll have to, um, when it gets, this repo gets deployed to the, the uh, remote repository, this, file, this folder won't be push with it. So in order to get that to push with it, we'll just do a git uh, keep, just like that. Alright, cool. So we'll go ahead and um, push our changes. Alright, so now once that's done, um, we've deployed, uh, we've pushed all our changes to our repo. And the next thing we want to go ahead and do is go to our Bitbucket account, which will be here, um, and this is where our repo is stored. So if I'll just refresh that, and there you go, um, you can see um, our changes have been made. Um, the the next thing we want to go ahead and do for our pipeline is we actually want to go to our repository settings, uh, go to pipeline settings and we just want to go ahead and enable pipelines. Now that we've enabled our pipelines, um, the next thing we have to do is um, how we actually, uh, I guess, log into our, our remote server or our, um, our, yeah, our, how we kind of connect to our server to deploy our changes. Um, so pretty much all that's needed here is first we'll just go and add our um, hosts, which can be a a, um, uh, a like a domain, or depending if you're using cloud for something behind a proxy, you might not want to do that. So you can use just the the raw IP. Um, and we'll just click fetch, and we'll just add that host. So the next thing we want to go ahead and do is um, we'll use our own keys. So basically we get two fields, our public and private. So if we log into or access our um, server, and now if we go, um, depending on how your server is set up, you might not have a um, .ssh uh, folder um, in your directory, so you might just want to have to go and generate one of those by just using the, the make directory command, but as I already have one, I'll just seed into it. Um, currently it's empty, so there's two main things we have to do now. Uh, one is to generate our public and private keys that our pipeline will use to access this server, and the second is our authorized keys for our file. So I go ahead and set up our keys. Okay, so now we've got our um, uh, private and public keys. So I'll just get the contents of both of those. All right, so we've got both of those um, key pairs. We'll just go ahead and save that. 
And the last thing we'll have to do is create our authorized keys. Um, and that simply is just copying in, um, creating a, a file called uh, authorized keys and pasting in our public key. Just like that. Alright, so um, that's pretty much all we need to do in terms of SSH keys. Uh, the next thing we will need to do is um, set up our repository variables um, and what they look like or where they're used is inside of our pipelines folder file um, we call two variables um, the server user which for my instance will be root and the server IP um, and I guess there's a bit of an explanation as to what this file is doing um, first it's creating a docker container um, on the bitbucket uh, servers um, off the image um, Ubuntu and basically it's saying we're going to create a pipeline for all the branches um, at the moment I only have one branch which would be master and then we'll have one step so whenever we push to the master branch this step um, will automatically run and basically what this does is it will update all the um, the uh, apt um, repositories um, and then we'll go ahead and install open SSH client and rsync and then after that we'll it, it um, goes and head and um, copies across all the contents um, using rsync to our server there is um, the way this does this is that the container is actually when the container is built it actually copies across all the contents from your repo into that container and then from that container you can then copy across the contents to wherever you like so in this instance I'll be using um, my remote server which is just a, a bare bones um, virtual private server um, and pretty much all this is doing is it's copying the contents of all the theme um, anything inside the themes uh, folder in the repo is going to be copied across to the themes folder on the remote. Um, so uh, we'll go back to our bitbucket and we'll go to our repository variables. And the two things I'll have to set up here is uh, server user, and that has the value of root. It's probably best that you choose um, a user other than root. But um, for this per, uh, test or tutorial, I'll use um, root. And so we've got those two in there. Um, so the next thing um, we need to do is we can either run the pipeline manually or we can do a push um, to it. So just to test that the pipeline is running, you can go to the pipeline and then just run pipeline. Uh, you select your branch, I only have master branch at the moment, and then it automatically selects the branch. Okay, so I've gone ahead and refreshed our um, Bitbucket pipeline, and it looks like we've run successfully. Um, and you can see the build breakdown um, and how um, the pipeline went through each step and any output. Um, so the first two won't have any output because we ran them um, silently or quietly. Um, but the second, uh, or the rsync, will actually show exactly which files we copied across. Um, that's just helpful for um, any debugging issues you might find. Um, so now if I go to my live site, um, you can currently see there's an issue. Um, auto store does not exist. Um, however, if I now update or refresh this page, um, because we've copied it across using our pipeline, um, it should now exist. And there you go. Um, you can see that our theme is now working. And I'll also show you um, in our appearances that our theme is running. And it is there. Um, so that's pretty much the, the simple um, uh, pipeline that you need to um, kind of set up to get running. Um, it's not perfect. Um, there's a lot more functionality you can add to this. Um, as you can see here with this line, um, I've just got a very basic demonstration of how you kind of add another kind of, um, I guess, a bit more complexity 
to the uh, pipeline and that would be basically by um, ignore this route here but you'd be moving the current theme um, so the one that's on the server you'd be moving that um, to or changing the name of it sorry to um, old that way when you copy across the theme from your repo um, it copies across all the new files um, and there's no kind of confusion whereas currently with this rsync command basically what we're doing is we're copying across all files but we're not removing any old files from the site or from the server um, so if you if you, if you push a change to your repo where you're actually deleting a file and you don't want it to exist on the site anymore you um, this command on its own won't do that it only copies across um, new changes and new files it doesn't actually ever remove any and I guess just on that as well uh, this um, these options here that get passed through uh, are basically saying we want to um, uh, create a zip version and run it uh, in a verbose uh, manner um, and as you can see here um, you can see that's how it's outputted everything uh, without that V option you won't be able to see all this detail so I guess this is just an, another example um, I'll go ahead and push a change um, using the, the repo um, and just show the I guess the, um, the the pipeline or the automatic pipeline in action um, so I'll just go ahead and say for instance um, what file should we do we'll, we'll go ahead and add a comment to the header um, so just yeah so we go ahead and add that pipeline test comment um, so now if we go ahead and add that to the repo okay so that's pushed so if we go to our pipelines and refresh we can see that it started a new pipeline alright so I've gone ahead and refreshed the um, pipeline screen and you can see that it successfully pushed um, or successfully run the pipeline so now if we go to our live site um, and we just refresh the page and we do inspect element or we can view page source uh, we should be able to see that our comment has come through and right here on line 88 we can see that our comment from our repo has actually come through um, and so I guess that's um, just a very basic overview of how to set up a continuous delivery um, or deployment pipeline um, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next one